Irresponsible and unprofessional. That's how Denver's DA summed up what she saw from Sheriff Tyler Brown. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Andrew Hill. I'm Shannon Ogden. Surveillance video caught the whole thing. A bar fight last month at Greenwood Village. So what really happened that night and why? In the only interview he has given, the sheriff sat down with our chief investigative reporter, Tony Kovaleski. It started out as date night, you and your wife. Yes. And now you're in front of our cameras explaining what happened. Yeah, and now I'm sitting here. I mean, a lot of people have seen uh, the other news reports about it, and I felt like it was appropriate and in the spirit of transparency to come out and, and talk to you. 32 seconds of video turned a date night at a Greenwood Village bowling alley into an assault investigation and culminated in a 128-page police report. Is there any Monday morning quarterbacking going on with you that maybe I could have done something differently? Always. Is there something I wish we could have done differently? Yes. The video shows the tension started with a verbal conflict. Police reports say that started after two men asked for the phone number of the sheriff's wife multiple times. I want people to know that this won't happen again as the sheriff of Arapahoe County, but ultimately I was trying to defuse the situation. And the video clearly shows how quickly things escalated. That's Sheriff Brown in the gray shirt. Watch as he grabs the arm of the guy with the beer bottle and pushes him towards the exit, then grabs him by the neck. We'll stop the video here for now. As you sit there now, is there part of you that wishes maybe when it started escalating verbally, you and your wife just walked away? Always. You know, if I could go back and replay that a thousand times, you know, knowing where we're at today, yes, just walk away. Now back to that video. The sheriff's actions led to this. Watch the guy in the coat. He jumps in and punches Sheriff Brown in the head two times. The sheriff responds by putting his hands up and walking away. Sheriff, was that the moment where the light went on and all of a sudden you said, oh my, I'm the sheriff of Arapahoe County. This isn't looking good. I knew that, you know, this was going to probably be something that resulted in me sitting in a chair talking to, to you and having to answer tough questions and, you know, explain what happened. As the sheriff of Arapahoe County, how hard is it to watch this video? It's hard. I wish it would have gone a completely different direction. We asked Sheriff Brown to walk us through every moment of the video. Why was he the one you went after? Because he was the one that was being the most verbally aggressive at that point. I thought he was grabbing back towards my wife. And as you can see, I grabbed his left arm. My hand didn't go directly to his neck. The area most people are questioning is that move when you grab his neck. So when I had him in the twist lock, my hand was on his back. And then when he flexed and turned towards me, my hand stayed up in that general area. And when I pushed him over the bar, my momentum took me in that direction. My intent was not to put my hand on his neck or restrict his breathing in any way. And according to this police report, during a phone call with the police chief of Greenwood Village, Sheriff Brown said, quote, I didn't grab anybody by the throat. The chief then said, you did. I'm looking at the video right now. Sheriff Brown described that call. He was concerned at this point that, you know, his, his initial comments were that I walked up and I grabbed this man by the neck. You see the video, I didn't walk up and grab him by the neck. I walked up and grabbed him by the wrist. And the video shows it happens fairly quickly. And then I removed my hand almost as quick, you know, within two to three seconds. Greenwood Village PD concluded there was probable cause for criminal charges against Sheriff Brown and three of the people involved in that altercation. After reviewing the facts, Denver's district attorney declined to file charges, writing, the parties involved do not wish to proceed with criminal charges and there is no reasonable likelihood of a conviction. But she also wrote, quote, I want to make it clear the behavior of Sheriff Brown in this situation was irresponsible and unprofessional for an elected sheriff. Some watch that video, Sheriff, and say, in your position, you should have never allowed that to happen. How do you answer that criticism? I, I think that, you know, individuals can, can have their criticism of that situation. I'll criticize myself and I'll be harder on myself than a hundred people would be. 
but put yourself in that position of protecting a loved one, a family member. We didn't go seeking an altercation that came to us during the investigation and during some of the reporting. Um, I still feel that I was justifying. That doesn't mean that what I did, I don't want a Monday morning quarterback and try to find different ways to do that, but I was still justified in my actions. We requested interviews with the man the sheriff pushed across the room and the man who punched the sheriff two times through an attorney, both declined. But he shared this statement. Neither of my clients wish to pursue legal action against Sheriff Brown. They understand that everybody makes mistakes and they understand this has been difficult for everyone involved. They would like to move on with their lives and it is time for everyone to put this incident behind them. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski.